Hello and welcome to our talk on the latest news on products and applications with one of the most filmed products in the Rexworth world, the APAS Production Assistant. Today we would like to show you its whole wide world shown on great examples. With me is my colleague Wolfgang Pomrin. Hello Wolfgang. Hello Kevin. Hello everybody. Wolfgang, for the ones who doesn't know APAS so far, can you please give us a little introduction about it? Yes, of course. APAS is the abbreviation for Automated Production Assistant and it is a collaborative robot. It is based on an industrial robot which is covered with a capacitive sensor skin. This sensor skin allows the robot to detect humans and this means the robot can work together with humans without any cage. So it is an industrial robot for collaborative applications. Well, then let's have a look. We have a very fancy application right next to us. Hello Olaf, what is this exactly? Hi Kevin, this is a modular production system which is a perfect example for a transformable factory. This means that outside of the manufacturing we can put these modules into operation and integrate them very easily into this modular production system with plug and play. And what is the robot's purpose here? With the help of the robot we can perform different process actions here. So as you can see we have three different modules on the modular production system. One is a transfer module, which you can see here. We have a joining module over there. And here over there we have an optical quality inspection module, which is making optical checks on the product. Nice. So this system we are offering in a scale of a machine vision up to a full station. With our machine artificial intelli intelligence platform, we have integrated AI already into our inspection solutions. Mm -hmm. A very fancy feature here is that these process modules localize themselves on this code field, as you can see here on the table, mm -hmm. by an integrated precision sensor. And they are kept with a vacuum on the plate, so now oh, yeah. I cannot move it anyhow. So and I will show you how easy we can move this around, put it into a new position, and the RPAS will recognize that automatically and very easily. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. So, by pushing the button, mm -hmm. I release the vacuum. I can move the system freely around the table, put it into a new position, for example, like here. Hit the button again. Vacuum will keep it in the position, and the robot will recognize automatically the new position of the product. Wow. Let's see if this works. So, as you can see now, it's moving to the new position. Take the part and just continue the operation. This is really a lot. Well, can the system be customized? Yes, it can be customized, of course, from a manual workstation to a collaborative system like here for safe human-machine interaction uh, up to a fully automated system. And the robot can be placed in the middle of the production right next to the staff with no safety fence? Yes, because the ARPAS has a very nice sensor skin on his arm. So this avoids collision with a human being. So while the mobile robot is moving, you can try that out. Just when it's moving, go close to the robot and try. And it stops even without touching, as you have seen. Wow, I didn't even touch it. This is really nice. Thank you for showing me this and letting me try it. Very good. And it's continuing automatically, as you can see. That was really interesting. But I've also heard there is a highly intelligent APIS inspector around here. Can you tell us more about that, Wolfgang? Yes, sure. APAS Inspector is an uh, optical inspection device, modular and compact, and consists of hardware for presenting objects under cameras, but also illumination and uh, camera systems, and uh, a set of sophisticated algorithms for 3D imaging and finding even the smallest defects on parts. Mm -hmm. Speaking about applications, Maybe it would help our audience to have a better understanding when we see what APAS can do in real life. So, let's have a look. This is a good idea. So let's have a look on this application, which is installed only a few meters from here in the production plant of Bosch in Stuttgart, Feuerbach. You see uh, that the worker can easily access the devices because there is no safety fence around. And the inspection here is for uh, parts which are placed in combustion engines. Um, the imaging device, APAS Inspector, does a set of different uh, inspections for quality reasons. In this case, for example, with 3D imaging, it's inspection of 
the surface of these parts, but there's also code reading and so on. You see in this case uh, the parts are moved under the camera and in different illumination situations, different characteristics of the parts are inspected. So um, the switching of the illumination, the moving of the parts and all this is done on a very narrow uh, space, so it is a very compact device for very uh, high-end applications. And you see um, that only a few parts are defect, they are placed in this orange box behind, um, but they can inspect it later on uh, because the imaging material, all the images are stored for later access. This is a very nice use case. Is there also artificial intelligence involved? Yes, artificial intelligence is used in this case to define, to find defects which are hardly described in a mathematical way, but easy to point on in a picture. Because these algorithms um, can a little bit feel how humans detect good parts and bad parts. All right, so the little handling task which we have seen here can also be taken to a larger scale. For example, if we talk about the fast-moving consumer goods industry, where we want to move pallets instead of single parts. So I've heard there's a really nice solution set in place in Spain. So I want to switch over to my colleague Alberto. Hello, Alberto. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? Fine. Thanks, Alberto. Would you be so nice to tell us more about the palletizing application with APAS in Spain? Uh, yes, we have a huge request to move a complete uh, palletizing line here in Spain. And uh, for this line, we use our APAS collaborative robot. And this line, uh, one of the main features of the main feature is that these uh, robots and this line can work in a col collaborative mode with uh, each robot working at uh, 0.5 meters by second. And if nobody is in the area, in, uh, in the area of, um, of the robot, this is going up, up to two and a half meters by second. So this is uh, really, really fast. As you can see here in the video, when the robot is uh, palletizing, if somebody is going in, the laser scanner detects the person and goes to collaborative, to collaborative speed, then the person can uh, put the carton, interlayer, and, and then when goes out, just push a, a button to confirm that he is not uh, in the area, and the robot is starting uh, again to, to palletize in a uh, fast speed. Also, one of the features of the, of the line is that we put the robot in, the, in a column, in a linear system, that uh, it is able to move in a safe mode, safe uh, movement, up to two meters, so we can take boxes from the, close to the, to the floor in a conveyor, for example, or you can uh, take boxes from a conveyor in, on a height, and you can do the pallet place in, in any, any way. So, one of the challenges we had here in, the, in this application was the differences of the boxes. Uh, also, some boxes are uh, were normal, more or less rectangular, but other boxes have different uh, layers of cartoons, so it's not easy to find the, the gripper, the right gripper, to take the boxes as well the interlayers. But uh, I think that we have made that you can see a very, very good solution. And Alberto, how fast can something like this be built up, and how much money does it save compared to conventional palletizing and handling systems? Yes, okay, of course. If you go to a really standard uh, partition line, it is really fast to, to build the solution, maybe a couple of weeks, uh, six to eight weeks. But uh, if you have to develop a specific or um, tailor made uh, solution, then maybe you need three, four months. The good thing here and the, and the benefit and the economic uh, thing of the solution is that, uh, for example, you see here the robot uh, working only in a collaborative speed. But this robot you can take with um, a forklift, you can move to a different palletizing line, and you can have a really industrial robot working really fast, or you can have the collaborative robot uh, palletizing, as I said before, up to two meters. Yes, the question of the return on invest is, of course, the most important question, because it's all about earning money, finally. So um, we make use of industrial robots which have industrial speed and can be used in industrial setups. And this is the difference between our collaborative robots and these of other um, suppliers in the market. So Alberto, thanks for all your input. Greetings to Spain. My pleasure. Have a good time and please let me know something about your collaborative solution for titling with the APAS. Wolfgang, did I hear that right? Collaborative tightening applications? Now, APAS can do also tightening tasks? Yes, you heard right. We have an application recently solved in a production line where wheels for motorcycles um, are produced, and the APAS 
tightens uh, spokes of wheels for motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And what about the collaboration here? Um, the idea is that there is a continuous material flow of the wheels for the worker takes the wheels, places them in a centering machine mm -hmm. and then uh, it is important that from both sides um, the spokes are tightened by the robots simultaneously and, um, but I think I have a video which shows it uh, in a better way. That sounds really futuristic. Yes, it sounds futuristic, but it's reality. It's still, uh, it's currently working since uh, autumn last year. It is in a three shift production. Mm -hmm. What you see here is how the wheels are brought to the tightening station. Uh, you see that there is a unit which takes the wheels and rotates them because it's important to tighten the spokes in the right order. Uh, but also it is important that from both sides the spokes are tightened simultaneously. So there are two cobots of IPAS which have both a completely safely covered um, tightening unit from Rexroth and the safety comes with this um, capacitive sensor skin which also covers the robot. And you see that um, the nut is brought into position uh, after the ro wheel has been rotated. Um, because it is a safe tightening of the spokes, it's not only important to have the precise torque, but also uh, to document the tightening process. So all tightening processes of each spoke of each wheel is completely documented for having later access to the data to, to be sure that every spoke has been tightened properly. Well, Wolfgang, that sounds really like a lot of effort to implement. Does it pay off? Uh, the effort to implement is not so high as it might look because um, you keep the environment as much as possible. This is belated automation and uh, allows for hybrid applications. These hybrid applications, uh, meaning you have a combination of human workers and automation, allows for uh, cost-effective automation even in existing <laughs> environments. So brownfield applications can grow to factory of the future even in existing cases. Wolfgang, thank you very much for this interesting and valuable information. Yes, it was a pleasure for me. Thank you. Okay, dear viewers, we are at the end now. I hope you enjoyed this and our booth team is available now to answer all your questions. Bye-bye. <laughs>